Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. It's exam time, and that's a very stressful time of the year. You're probably revising super hard. But what you really want to know is, how should you answer questions in the exam to get the most marks? Students ask me all the time, why didn't I get 100% in your paper, sir? And the answer, usually, is you didn't actually answer the question. So, I thought it might be helpful if I picked one of my questions from last year's exam, showed you some answers that the students put, good and bad, and then I will have a go answering the question so you can see what sort of answer I'm actually looking for. So, that sounds good to you. Get yourself a drink. I've got coffee, as ever, and let's make a start. When you first look at the exam paper, it's really important to take a moment just to read the questions. That will help calm your nerves and then you'll know what topics are coming up. Once you've done that, look at the waiting for each question and work out how many minutes you should be spending answering the question. For the question that I'm going to look at today, which is why does making the salt form of a drug improve solubility? The question was worth 10% on a one hour paper. 10% of 60 minutes is six minutes. So what that means is my expectation of the student answering that question is that they spend six minutes thinking how to answer the question and writing something down. So therefore, I'm not looking for a lot of words, am I? You can't write that much in six minutes. But it's really important to think about what you are actually writing, because if you don't have many words, you need to make each word count. So, in order to answer that question, how, why does making the salt form of a drug improve solubility? You need to know a little bit about what is a salt, what happens when you dissolve a salt in water, and why does it change solubility? Those are three key things, aren't they? So, let's look at some of the answers the students wrote in last year's exam, starting with this one. The solubility of a drug will affect its pharmacokinetic properties, chemical stability, and the choice of dosage form, which is an important part of drug evaluation. Salt formation can ionize drugs, increase the polarity of drugs, increase solubility, and improve the water solubility of drugs through salt formation. Now, do you think that answer got a lot of marks? No. Why? Because it hasn't actually answered the question, has it? The student's written quite a large paragraph with a lot of information in, but not a lot of it is actually answering the question. We don't need to know about the change in pharmacokinetic properties or chemical stability or anything like that, do we? The question is asking, why has the solubility changed upon making a salt? Uh, and all that question says is making a salt improves the water solubility of drugs through salt formation. The question told you that. So all this answer is doing is essentially rewriting the question and adding some extra stuff which is not helping. So unfortunately, this is an example of a question, uh, an answer rather, that's got no marks. And that's rather unfortunate. It's unfortunate because the student feels like they've written quite a lot, but actually they're not getting anything from it. Let's look at the next answer, which is this one. The formation of salt will cause the material to start ionizing. So ionized substances will be produced and therefore more drugs will be able to be found in the aqueous layer, which will make the material more hydrophilic and therefore increase the water solubility. Good answer or bad answer? The answer is, yeah, it's got some information in there, which is good. So this thing about ionizing, I think is good. But again, it doesn't really answer the question, does it? For one thing, I don't know what more drugs will be able to be found in the aqueous layer means, for starters. And then it essentially says um, the material more hydrophilic and therefore increase the water solubility. It would be much better if there was maybe a chemical structure or some sort of explanation of what a salt is and why it was increasing the solubility. So this answer would have got a couple of marks, but it certainly wouldn't have got all the marks for the question. 
Next up, this works because a salt is formed by the chemical reaction between an acid and a base. That's good, I like that start. The acid and base combine to form a neutral compound and the excess positive or negative charge is neutralized. The excess positive or negative charge of what? I'm not sure. Uh, this neutralization can change the overall charge on the molecule which can affect its solubility. So again, the problem here is what we're starting with, which is an acid and a base, there's no overall charge, they're both neutral. And once they've reacted to form a salt, everything is still neutral. So we start with something neutral and we end with something neutral. Uh, but this answer is making that a little bit more unclear. And again, it doesn't really explain what is causing the change in solubility. So again, a couple of marks, but not the full marks for the answer. Let's look at this one. For example, if the drug substance is a weak acid, forming a salt with a strong base will neutralize the acid and increase the solubility of the resulting salt in water. It's the same deal, isn't it? The basic principle of saying an acid and a base react to form a salt is great, not arguing with that. And then the last part of that answer says, and increase the solubility of the re resulting salt. It's rewriting the question, but not answering the question. So again, the student feels like they've written something which is going to attract marks, but it's not going to get marks because not actually answering the question, is it? Let's look at this one, which is a much better answer. When salt is dissolved, it is generally accompanied by the formation of conjugated acid, which will produce protons in water, produce free base, change pH, pH of the solution will change. That's the same thing really, isn't it? And pH affects the ionization of the substance. As a result, the solubility increases. That's a much better answer. It's hitting a number of the key points, isn't it? One of which is that the salt of a basic drug will contain a conjugated acid. Very good. That produces protons in water. That will change pH. And it's the pH change which causes the increase in solubility. So that's a pretty good answer. It's just lacking maybe one or two chemical structures or formally just to really demonstrate the student knows what they are talking about. So, a reasonable question that you might ask me is, well, okay, Simon, if you're sitting down answering your own exam question, how would you answer it? And that's a good point. So I thought what we'll do is write a model answer on the board and you can see whether I managed to answer the question in six minutes. To do that, I have my trusty timer. I'm going to set it for six minutes and let's get started. The first thing to remember is that we react an acid at a base to make a salt. So let's write that. A salt is formed when an acid reacts with a base. Then we need to decide, is our drug an acid or a base? Most drugs are basic, so let's go with that. Most drugs are basic. B. So we would react then with a strong acid such as HCl to give a salt BH plus Cl minus. That way we've demonstrated we know what's going on in the salt formation. Then we need to think, okay, the question's asking us about solubility, isn't it? So what happens when we add this to water? When we add the salt to water, it will dissociate to form BH plus and Cl minus. Then we're demonstrating we know what's happening in solution. BH plus is a conjugate acid and so can donate its proton 
to water forming H3O plus. This is the mechanism by which solubility is increasing. H3O plus reduces the pH of the solution. The solubility of bases increases at low pHs. Okay, so we've given a reason why the solubility of our compound increases. And then, if I were you to get a, an extra mark, really to demonstrate that you understand what's going on, you could say, if we therefore dissolve the salt in a buffer, there will be no increase in solubility because there will be no change in pH. There we are, stop the clock. That was under four minutes. Four minutes and that included thinking about the answer, thinking about the question, remember, making sure that what we write is relevant to the question. I did not look at my revision notes and I did not cut and paste anything. So I hope you can see it is possible to write an answer which is ticking a lot of the boxes that I'm looking for when marking if you simply think to yourself, what is the question actually asking me? Don't think to yourself, which lecture did this question come from? And go and copy the lecture notes from that lecture and use that as the start of your answer, because that takes time to do that. Secondly, there'll be a lot of text, much of which, is, much of which isn't answering the question. And then when you start to go through it, you're having to delete text or change it or alter it in some way. It just ends up being a bit of a mess. It's much easier to start with a blank sheet, think about how you're going to answer the question and just write the answer out. When I or anyone else sets an exam question, that's what we are expecting you to do. Start with a blank sheet of paper and write the answer out. Six minutes isn't a lot of time, is it? And so therefore, my expectation of how much you're going to write isn't going to be enormous because I know you've only got six minutes. So I hope that helped. I hope seeing some examples of good and bad answers from some of the students has made you understand a little bit more about why it's not just about putting text on a piece of paper. It's about making sure that every word of your answer is addressing the question. If that helped, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. And even more importantly, think about sharing the link to this video amongst your friends. If there's anything else you want to know or some model answers you'd like me to talk through, leave a comment in the box below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.